Welcome. We're going to show you uh, my experience here using the fuel adaptation on my Max ECU Mini. So essentially, if you enable this, uh, you can, by default, it's disabled, but if you enable it, it is essentially a long-term fuel trim. So it isn't intended to be used as a tune, auto-tune, but you can use it to make changes automatically to the fuel table based on the percentage of trim that you're getting on your lambda values. Um, so essentially, if you have your lambda table, like right here, all this area is set to 0.98 lambda, and uh, in my fuel table, say right here, for example, I'll show you uh, on my table here, I've got some areas that desperately need a little bit of fuel. They're uh, definitely a little bit lean right around idle and uh, over here I think there's some that are a little bit rich and so on and so forth so based on your lambda table and your lambda control so your lambda control set up here by how much it's correcting to match your fuel table to your lambda value target um, that trim value is being recorded in your fuel adaptation so even when your ECU is not plugged into your uh, laptop, it will save these values. So if you drive around for, I don't know, a few weeks or days or whatever it is, and you just have the ECU running, it stores this, as long as it's enabled, it stores these fuel trims uh, and updates them constantly as you're driving. And then it keeps that stored. And then when you want, you can go in here and you can hit apply correction to VE table, which is what I'm going to do here in a minute. I'm going to start up the vehicle, uh, let it let it update because I haven't uh, touched this in a couple days, and we're going to see these values change, and then we're going to apply the correction to the fuel table, and we'll see how different it is when we turn off uh, our Lambda control. So let's uh, let's go take a look. So let me start the vehicle. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna read from the Max ECU. And we're gonna go back to our fuel adaptation. And as you can see from previously, this is down a little bit. I think it was in the 8%. Um, a couple of these have changed just from me driving it quite a bit. And you can set rules for when this uh, long-term fuel trim is looking at your table. So you wanna make sure that you know, after 30 seconds of runtime or a minute or whatever, and that it's fully up to operating temperatures so that your uh, warm up enrichment isn't affecting it. But basically, what you can do is uh, you can hit apply correction to VE table. Now, what this will do is it will apply all of these values. It will take out fuel up here and it will add fuel down here where it's these positive values and uh, it basically trims it according to my lambda target table right here. So uh, let's go ahead and give it a try. So let's just, uh, we're gonna go over here. You can take a look at it right now, see these values. So like 37 down here, 45, 51. We're just gonna like kind of take a glance at this um, and then we're gonna go change it. So let's go to our fuel adaptation and it's gonna erase it and start over. So just be ready for it. So apply, it's gonna ask if we wanna apply. Yep. And then we go back to our fuel table and look at that. It has changed this um, by about 5%. And this was 45, I think this was uh, you know, 36, 37. Um, so it has changed it, it has done that trim. And so in here in a minute, I think my Lambda control is gonna wait for the engine to be uh, up to operating temperature. Uh, it has to be up to 150 degrees and we're only at 122. So um, once we do that, we can, actually, um, we can actually see how much it's trimming. So you can see now, now that we've got the engine warmed up, uh, this is with the Lambda control off and we've cleared our fuel adaptation table. And now we're idling at like 9.9, three nine four lambda so because everything is dynamic and you've got temperature changes and load changes and 
there's just a lot that goes on to keep an engine idling perfectly at a set lambda. Uh, you could see now uh, why having a closed loop lambda control is very valuable because check this out. As soon as I go back, actually on the fuel adaptation, we're just gonna we're gonna disable it again real quick, and then we're gonna go to lambda control and enable this with the wideband. And then you're going to immediately see down here the lambda control take over and we get a 0.98 lambda. See, just like that. It goes and uh, it'll slowly just hone in on it. And then now we can go back to our fuel adaptation and you're going to see it's going to start looking at those couple percent. Um, see right here? It's already seeing it needs to remove a little bit of fuel because it's now rich. So it just slowly starts picking away at it and as you drive around it will just determine how much fuel needs to be corrected so it can get right to your lambda target table so that's uh that's pretty much it if you guys like uh learning more about the max ecu and what it can do please uh leave a like and a comment and uh, subscribe or become a channel member if you're really interested thank you